Hello, this is Chucky and welcome to Digital Goulash. Today I'm playing with Photoshop Element 7 and I may already have a tutorial about how to make 3D pop effects here with people popping out of the photo in Photoshop but I've never really tried it in Photoshop Elements. I kinda wanted to have this 3D looking wave as if the photograph is kind of a little bit uh, turned and then the girl popping out of the photograph and I was able to do it and what I'd like to do is show you how I did this and maybe you have a little better uh, attempt at it than I did so let's go back to revert under here and revert to my original photo now this photo I received from uh, actually I downloaded it from Flickr it is Lenolfian is the name of the person right here and they put it on the Creative Commons license and I was able to download this so uh, these error messages keep popping up no uh, so I was able to download this and then I can use it for the Creative Commons I'm going to use it to teach you how I made the 3D looking effects first thing I'm going to use is my selection tool right here if you click on that you can see that that's the quick selection tool and I'm going to use my brackets to make the brush size as you can see on the screen I'm going to make my brush size a little bit bigger and I'm going to do my best to trace around this girl now I did just do a video on how to get more of the hair when you're doing selections and you can always try that or you can go to Russell Brown and he's got a great tutorial if you have the full version of Photoshop but I am specifically using Photoshop Elements and trying to do the best that I can to show you how to do the 3D pop effect here. Now, as long as I have the minus sign here, subtract from selection, I can make my brush size a little bit smaller. I can go back in here and subtract from the selection. Now, what I'm doing is I'm trying to isolate her from the background because I need to make a duplicate of just her, not the background. And I'm going to take my brush and make it just a tiny bit smaller there we go I kinda have her like I said I have another tutorial on how to capture the hair but for right now just showing you the 3D pop effect I think this is okay I always save the selection I'm gonna say girl outline just in case for some reason I lose it I don't want to take that time to redo what I have selected here now we have a lock layer now this is a little bit uh, a little bit more in depth of a Photoshop element so you may have to follow along and redo this uh, replay this video a couple times to be able to get this so I will try to talk you through it double click the background layer and that will unlock it it will turn it into a layer so we now have a layer here and then if I'm on any other tool other than the selection tool I can use control or command J and it's going to make a duplicate of what was in my marching ant. So there we have it. So, so far I've selected something and I've separated the girl from the background. Those are the two things that I needed to do right away. After that, I need to create another layer. If you hold the control key down and click on the new layer, it will make a layer beneath the one that you have reason I have to do that is I have to make the outline of what is going to be our picture. You use a marquee tool here and because it's going to wave kind of a 3D wave you don't want to go all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to put my marquee tool in here. The next tool I'm going to use is the stroke key. Now the stroke key allows you to stroke or go from here and go inside and paint a line of a certain color under the edit we can go to stroke outline and I can pick a color and stroke it to the inside now I'm using 25 pixels this may vary depending upon the dimensions of your picture 255 255 255 are the additive colors that make white not black remember 0 is the absence of color 255 is the full spectrum of color there's white 25 pixels to the inside and watch what happens so there is our picture frame now for right now I'm gonna hit control D command D to get rid of the ants because I wanna create a distortion here to make this look like it's 3D not just a static rectangle that distortion is under filter under distort and under wave now once again you're gonna have to play around with this and look at 
the preview right here. I'm using 1 and 393. That just means that my wavelength, I'm only going to have one wavelength here, and the amplitude is going to be very short. And what that does is it kind of gives it a 3D looking effect down there. I just left it wrap around and sign and selected OK. Now you can see that it kind of did a sine wave here and gave it that 3D looking uh, wave effect that we have. Now we need to put her in that wave or that picture so I'm going to have to do some erasing using the eraser tool and we're going to have to adjust the paintbrush sizes as we go. If I hold the control key down and click on this layer here it's going to select all the non-transparent pixels which is white. Now remember if I turn this eyeball off you can see that it picked all the white or the non-transparent pixels on that layer. Now we need to go in here and we need to erase. Now all it's going to erase is the girl. If I go here it's just going to erase the girl right there. And I also need to go down to layer 0 and I need to I can turn this off for a second. Just need to go in there. I can erase this. Okay, we'll turn that back on now. I also have to erase what's on the outside of this. Now, how do I select that? Well, right now if I try to erase this, I cannot because it's only letting me erase what's inside the marching ants. I must go in here and I must invert this which is Control shift i Now it's going to select everything else. Now you need to be very careful with the layer management here because the first layer, what we need to do is we need to erase the girl, but we just really need to erase what's on the outside. And to make this easier, I'm going to take my visibility layer because I have two pictures of the girl. And I'm going to erase the bottom part of the girl. Now this part of the girl you want to leave above because that's the 3D looking effect then I'm going to come back here and I need to erase everything else. See I was on the wrong layer. I need to go over here to layer 0 and erase everything else. Now you can tell that it's not erasing the girl because the girl is on a different layer, the one that we cut out. So I'm just going to erase this background, being careful not to get too crazy here. Now the transparent pixels are the ones that look like the checkerboard pattern. And I'm going to go here. I could, ooh, looks like I'm able to go in there and not have to change my brush size. So right now on layer 0 we have what's inside here. Layer 2 we have the white that goes around it. And layer 3 we have the girl that's three dimensional. Let's go and click Control or Command D to get rid of the marching ants on her. Now we need to merge these two layers right here, layer 2 and layer 1, because we need to make it as one photo. So hold the Control key down and click the second layer and you'll notice that both of them highlight. If you right click on this, you can merge the layers. And what we just did was we made the photo on one layer and then the girl is sitting on a secondary layer. The only one that we want to apply an effect to is the bottom layer, which is this drop shadow. If you don't see it, you can click on the FX right here. You have effects, turn the caret over, and then this FX right here will give you all the effects, and then you hit apply. Now, I'm not that happy with this real light because it doesn't give it that real 3D effect. But you can see that right here it put an FX on our layer. If you double click on it, it gives you some more options and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna really make that darker and then may even just put a little bit more distance in there and then I'm kinda of happy with that now so I'll just select OK so now we have this picture with a little bit of a 3D effect here now we need to give it a background so let me go ahead and erase that there's a couple things here that I can erase a little bit more uh, there we go kind of clean that up some. We need to create another layer and if you remember I showed you if you hold the control key down and click on the new layer it makes a new layer underneath. 
The gradient tool is a great tool when you use two colors that are similar, one darker, one a little bit lighter. So I'm going to pick, let's say, a little bit darker red. And then on the foreground, by double clicking it, I'm going to pick a little bit lighter red maybe even a little bit lighter red and select OK. So now I have two reds, one's almost a pink, one's almost a maroon. If I choose my gradient layer right now, right under the bucket tool, uh, we don't need that, right under the bucket tool, we can go in here and on um, this empty layer, we can drag this down like this and it makes kind of a nice gradient going from light to dark. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to crop this image here. Let's take it over here. When I'm happy with it, I can either hit the checkbox or hit enter. And there we have it.